Physical and environmental security, domain seven. In the domain synopsis of physical and environmental security, we're here to look at the necessary requirements in protecting the physical and environmental nature of the building and the surrounding area that houses all your information systems and more importantly, your staff that uses them. We look at security surveys, risk and vulnerability assessments, site planning, forms of access control, also things that protect the environment, such as heating, cooling, and also fire protection. In the area of physical and environmental security, some of the key elements in the domain include people, the facility that they work in, and all the data, equipment, support systems, media, and supplies they utilize. So it's not just computers. And then we're looking at the elements that involve choosing a secure site. If you put your site in the heart of a glide path of an airport, you increase the likelihood an airplane may accidentally land right in the middle of your building, which includes the data center. Also, you need to secure the facility from unauthorized riffraff trying to break in or somebody trying to steal something from within. You go to all this trouble of laying out elaborate logical security, and it gets defeated by somebody walking out with backup tapes that contain sensitive information, and oops, those tapes weren't encrypted. Additionally, you want to make sure that everybody is safe along with all the equipment being safe. The agenda in this chapter, first of all, we want to make sure we know where we're at in defining physical security. We want to talk about practical considerations on where you locate your facility. What do we do to put a perimeter, a physical security perimeter, around our building and what it contains? What are some important considerations in the construction of the building so it will be properly fire resistant? We also need to be concerned with electrical issues and countermeasures and how to detect and suppress fires in as effective a manner as possible so everything doesn't go up in smoke. Then we'll review the chapter and as always we'll have the review and practice questions. So a lot of what we've talked about in the course up to this point has related to the logical security side of things and where we're concerned about hackers and other abusers or anticipated abusers of our environment. But in this chapter, we're gonna talk about somebody who's trying to penetrate your physical perimeter. And in this context, we need to be concerned about the buildings and facilities where we contain our computer equipment and all our offices and business operations and the perimeter around them. Another key area is mobile computing. When your computing equipment and your data walks out of the building in an authorized manner, but it's out there in harm's way, which also includes telecommuting when your employees work at home. A very important point, physical security measures are the first line of defense and people are the last line. Physical security is there to protect the people and the data, but the people come first. We also need to look at more attributes of the physical first line of defense. This would include perimeter protection, how you structure your buildings, technical controls used in the physical security complex like proximity devices and intruder detection systems. We also need to take a look at how we make sure we have continuous reliable power and how we stop fires and other bad emergencies from affecting our environment. Where do we start? Doing a vulnerability assessment. We need to inspect the buildings on a regular basis and everything that's in them. We need to reassess the facility location, especially if you're planning on moving out of your current location. We want to make sure everybody's properly trained. We also need to be aware of the history of losses, and this ties into some of the actuarial statistics we discussed in the first chapter of the course. And what are the current controls, and also considering what might be some additional controls that we need to deploy as a result of doing these assessments.